Let's uh, begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you so much and praise your name for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, right now we want to invite the Holy Spirit into our minds again. Lord, please be with us. May the things that we do be for your honor and for your glory. I ask in Jesus' name, amen. You know, it's very good for us to um, praise God in the good times. It's easy. It's easy for us to praise God when things are going right, when our job is going good, when we have the salary that we like, when our car doesn't break down. It's easy for us to praise God when we can come keep up with our bills and everything is just going great. You know, it's kind of like children when uh, Christmas time comes around and they have some gifts under the tree with their names on it. We're excited and that's when we praise God. We love God at that time. We love God in Thanksgiving time when we see the uh, the veggie loaf for the turkey, the stuffing, we see the cranberry sauce, we see everything just set up so beautifully. We see a salad, and uh, it's easy to praise God then. But what about the hard times? What about the times when in our lives it doesn't seem to be going right? What about those times in our lives when we have planned something a certain way and all of a sudden it's, it's twisted? And it's not going to the way that we planned it, and it throws us for a loop. What about those times when we get sick, or our loved ones get sick, or somebody in our family comes up with cancer? What about those times when we're running late, and we get a flat tire, when we can't keep up with our bills, when we have problems in our marriage or with our children, when we have problems with our jobs? It's a little bit harder to praise God at those times. I know that because I have gone through those times. You know, and I pray that God helps me. I pray that He transforms me so that I can praise God in the good, in the bad, and everything in between. You know, it was Friday. I had been at work. I had been walking on an I-beam for, um, that was about 40 feet above the ground. I had been excited. You know, I had some money. I I had finished my first semester in theology. And um, everything seemed to be going okay until I got to the shop. We all used to drive together, and it was like, <laughs> it, it, I think every single guy in that truck smoked. And I was suffocating, and I cracked the window, and they look at me like I was some wimp, so I'd roll it right back up. <laughs> and it was so hot. So we get to the shop, and I was like, man, thank you, Lord, because tomorrow's Sabbath, and I don't have to work. And suddenly, the boss, the foreman, comes up to me, and he tells me, like, hey, Zacchaeus, Unfortunately, we're going to have to let you go. And they let me and another guy go. And I felt defeated. So I'm driving back home, and as I'm driving home just outside of Cleburne, before I got to Keene, my car breaks down. How can we give th- thanks to God who we can't even see? We're praying, and it's an act of faith, but we don't see Him. And then it says, he is good. It says, His love endures forever. So it throws people off there. They don't know how to thank a God who they can't see. And then we continue on. We see in the New Testament these great men of faith. And one of them, in uh, Acts chapter 16, verse 25, if you want to look it up, we see something that's really amazing. We see Paul and Silas singing. And some people who may not know the story, in, Paul, in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, we see Paul and Silas, and they're singing, and they're praising God. And some people may think, well, maybe they were doing special music for church. Or some may think, well, you know what, maybe they were so happy, you know, they're singing, and they're singing praise, they're praising God, and they're probably on horseback, riding home, and they're just probably at the entrance of their gate, waiting for a hot meal. But as we continue to read, we see that that's not the case. We see Paul and Silas singing, and the way I see it, Paul is singing melody, and Silas is singing harmony. And they're in prison. But the thing is that they're not in prison visiting a member. They're in prison as prisoners themselves. And they're singing praises to God. The question is, does that make any sense? Does that make sense to be going through hard times, and they don't know if the next morning when they wake up, they're only going to be woken up to be hanged, or to be killed. And yet they're singing praises to God. 
In our minds, that doesn't make sense. But you see, that's what happens when you allow the Holy Spirit to live in your life. Your life won't make sense to the world. You'll do things that seem crazy. As a matter of fact, we have several times in, in the Gospels where Paul is beaten up. There's this one that's just awesome. Paul is beaten up. He's dragged outside of the city, beaten up, left there for dead. He gets right back up and marches right back into that city. When God is in your heart, when God has filled you and transformed your mind, you do things that the world considers crazy. And Paul continues to praise God. Paul actually tells us in, in Romans chapter 8, if you want to look it up, Romans chapter 8, verse 28, says, And we know that in all things God works for good of those who love Him, who have been called according to His purpose. Let me read it again. And we know that in all things, in all things, in all things means in the good and in the bad, God works for the good of those who love Him. You know, and there's times in our lives when we go through hard times and, and we are very quick to blame God. You know, and I just want to make mention of this. I want to make this clear that most of the hard times that we go through isn't because God has caused them to happen. It's because we have put ourselves in those situations and then we blame God for it. Oh God, why, why did you break my heart with this girl? Maybe you shouldn't have been dating her. <laughs> Your parents probably told you different. Oh God, why, why can't I keep up with my bills? Well, maybe you shouldn't be taking on bills you can't afford with your part-time job at McDonald's. That happens a lot. A lot of times we get into these problems and these situations and we begin to blame God. Why, God, why did He do this? God, why did He cause this? And it's our own doing. But then there's also those times when bad things happen to us. And I'll be honest, I don't believe that God causes them. God allows them to happen. That's totally different than God causing bad things to happen to us. God allows them to happen. Just like Job. Who caused those bad things to happen to Job? It was Satan. God just allowed it to happen. God allows us to go through these hard times. It says, for the good of those who love Him. It doesn't seem to make sense. God allows His people to go through all kinds of things. He allows us to go through rough times and good times to polish us, to make us more like Him. That's what God is, God is about. So, we're quick to blame and we're quick to judge and sometimes we're praising God when everything seems to be going good oh Lord thank you so much but as soon as things begin to get a little bit hard we don't even want to speak about God and that's not how it should be we need to give God thanks in the good and the bad and everything that's in between if we can learn from a situation if we can learn from a hard time and see God leading we have made it through we have become victorious. But you see, the problem is, sometimes when we go through hard times, we don't look for the way out. We're just quick to point God, God, you did this to me. You did this to me. Instead of doing our best to allow Him to just pull us out and keeping our faith up. Faith isn't just where you believe in something good. Faith is when you believe in who God is and that He's going to pull you out. You don't know how. But you know He'll pull you out. You know what? God's going to allow us to go through hard times. God may even allow some of us here to pass away. But it says that God's love endures forever. So although in this world we may go through hard times, we may go through losses, we may go through sickness, we may be broke sometimes, God's love endures forever. What that means is that if something were to happen to me today, because of Jesus Christ, I have eternal life in the future. So the things that happen to us today, the bad things that happen to us in our lives, the negative things that happen here, it isn't going to last forever. And just like that day when I was walking home and it's like 105 degrees out there, I didn't have a car, I didn't have a job, and then this guy pulls up, I'm like, you got to be kidding me, God. I don't even like this guy. At that moment, I was trapped at that moment. I was trapped only with that vision, with that picture. Not seeing that God was going to pull me through and was going to bless me in the future. You know, and I pray, I, I ask God, Lord, help me 
not to just praise you when things are going good. Help me to praise you even when things aren't going the way I have asked them to be. Even when I'm not prepared for those sicknesses, even when I'm not prepared for those struggles, help me to continue to praise you just like Paul did. We have another story of Joseph who went through hard times and this is a clear, this is an awesome picture of how God will pull his children and will allow bad things to happen to them. But through the faith of that child, who, that, that person who has put their faith in God, God transformed a negative thing into a good thing. Joseph was sold into slavery by his own, by his own family, by his own brothers. He was cast into a well and they were going to kill him. And they were like, hey, I got a better idea. If we kill him, we don't gain anything. Let's sell him to the Ishmaelites. This is where we can get some money. So they sell him off and, and Joseph goes to, to, to Egypt. You guys know the story. Potiphar picks him up and Joseph, through his work ethic and his honesty, he caught the eye of Potiphar. And it doesn't mention his name, but I'm going to call her Potipharia. <laughs> he catches her eye as well. So Joseph went from a slave to second in command in the household right back to prison. But even while in prison, he dedicated his life to God. He kept his faith in God even when he didn't see God's blessings. Through his faith in God, that's what pulled him out. While in prison, even the prison guards liked him. Everybody liked him. Joseph was a likable guy because of his faith. It's like he was wearing an invisible shield where all the ugliness of this world couldn't be attached to him because of his faith in God and his goodness. So, Joseph rises to be a leader in prison. He begins to interpret dreams, and that is how the, the Pharaoh of Egypt, the most powerful nation in the world at that time, the richest nation of the world, in that part of history, saw Joseph and saw him as something good. And Joseph becomes second in command of the whole entire nation, of a world empire. This young kid who was sold into slavery, who became powerful, who all of a sudden went right back to prison, is now back as second in command of a world empire. Through his faith in Jesus Christ. And now that Joseph is standing there in front of his brothers, the guys who had sold him, he could have had the opportunity to just have that sweet revenge. But because God was living in his heart, he had mercy on him. And Joseph even says it to them. He's like, the things that you meant for evil, God used them for good. God allows us to go through, through hard times so that when He pulls us through, we are as refined gold. We need to have faith in God. We need to praise God in the good, the bad, and everything that is in between. How? How do we praise God when we're going through hard times? How do, how do we praise God when we're not receiving His blessings? Because it's, here's what I think. I don't think we should just praise God for His blessings. We need to praise God for the bad also. But our faith needs to be based on who God is, not on His actions, not on those blessings, not on those bad things that He allows to happen. We need to base our faith on who He is. In Psalm chapter 107, verse 1, what does it say? How long does God's love endure? It says, endures forever. God's love endures forever. You know, and it's not this kind of love that we see here in this world where a man and a wife promise to, to love each other till death do them part. And yet we have 50% of families, marriages, divorced. That's not the, God, the, the, the love that God promises. God isn't a, a God who promises love like a child. I remember when I was a little boy uh, in Mexico, my mom would ask me, how much do you love me? And I was like, oh, mom, I love you. I love you like 80 trains long. That was my definition of love, distance. It was something measurable. Other kids are like, oh, mom, I love you all the way to the moon and back. God says, my love endures forever. I was looking it up in the Psalms, how, how we should give thanks. And it says constantly, give thanks to God because His love endures forever. I can remember at least five instances in the Psalms where it says, give thanks to God because His love endures forever. So why do we give thanks to God? 
because of who He is and because of His love. All the things that we go through in this world, those are just things to polish us. Those are just things to help us become stronger people. Help us to develop our faith in Him. When we go through those hard times, when things are dark, when we can't see God's blessings, when maybe there isn't Christmas uh, presents under the tree, maybe when there isn't a meal at our table, continue to praise God and give Him thanks. You can always, always find something good to thank God for. You know, it's interesting. We, in Texas, we complain because we don't get enough rain. In Michigan, <laughs> there was a, a summer where we didn't have rain for a month. And man, people were like, man, this drought is horrible. I don't think I ever remember it going a whole entire month without rain. I was like, what? Is that it? In Texas, we can go three to four months without rain. That's a drought. And then when we finally get rain, oh man, it's always raining. What are we going to do with all this rain? When winter comes, man, it's so cold. When it's, I wish summer was here. It's constant. We're going back and forth all the time. But we need to remain firm and faithful in God's love. A love that endures forever. A love that can't ever end for His children. The story is told... <clears throat> A Berkuchi is an ancient man who trains eagles for hunting. They capture, t tame and train and keep eagles um, is highly ritualized. Most eagles which have a lifespan of about 40 years are caught when very young, either snatched from a nest or trapped in a baited net. Once captured, the eagle is hooded and placed in a cage with a perch that sways constantly so it cannot rest or sleep. For two or three days, it is also deprived of food. During this time, the Brikuti talks, sings, and chants to the eagle for hours on end. Finally, he begins to feed and stroke it. Slowly, the weakened creature comes to rely on its master. When the Brikuti decides to, that the relationship has become strong enough, the training begins. Not all eagles can be trained, but those who take the life with their master display intense loyalty. While the training and breaking of eagles may seem harsh, it is a picture of how over time God breaks our independent spirit and draws us close to Him. It's just like the, the Israelites when they were going through hard times, God allowed them to go through those things so they could trust Him, so that he could, they could have faith in Him. And He did tremendous miracles for them. And that's a dangerous thing, that they would put their faith in God only because of the miracles. He parted the Red Sea. He delivered them through ten plagues. They had light by night and shade by day. They had manna. And that's where the Israelites messed up. They would put their faith in the, the, the temporary things instead of developing their relationship with God daily. My prayer... My prayer is that I will be more like Paul. That I will be like Paul who praises God in the good times and in the bad times. But Paul wasn't able to do that all the time. Paul had to come across. He had to have an encounter with Jesus Christ. And once he had that encounter with, with Jesus Christ on the road to Damascus, that's when Christ's life was transformed. That's why Paul was able to to preach and the gospel even where he wasn't wanted. That's how Paul was able to praise God when he was hungry, when he was shipwrecked, when he was cold, when he was in prison. Paul was constantly praising God because Paul had spent time with Jesus in the good and in the bad. Joseph as well. Some people think that Joseph was already naturally a good person. And he was, but he was a spoiled brat when he was with his dad. It wasn't until Joseph, and the, the Patriarchs and Prophets actually mentions this, it wasn't until Joseph had been sold into slavery. While he was on the road to Egypt, he says to himself, I'm not going to be able to make it this way. And he decided to allow God to enter his heart. The only way that Joseph was able to remain strong and faithful to God, the only way that Joseph was able to praise God in the good and in the bad was because at one point in their life they had invited Christ to be the, 
the, their savior of their life, the ruler of their lives. We must do the same thing too. Jesus Christ calls us to, to be with Him daily. You know, the Bible is clear that Jesus would spend time, that when He would pray to God, sometimes all night long. And other times He would wake up very early to be with God. So how was Jesus able to be victorious? Because He had spent time with God. So my question is to you, do you want to be able to praise God in the good, the bad, and everything that is in between? The answer is to spend time with Jesus daily. Every single day, bright and early, spend time with God. Spend time with God. Those days that may seem impossible, those times when, when life seems so hard that you ask yourself, how am I going to make it through this? You will be able to put your faith in God and say, the only way I'm going to make it through this is because of God's love. Although I can't see Him right now, although I can't touch Him and I can't grab onto His hand, I know that He loves me and His love endures forever. And if something were to happen to us today, it wouldn't matter. Because I know that I have put my life in Jesus' hands and when He comes back, He will resurrect us. We must praise God in the good, the bad, and everything that is in between. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we just want to thank you so much, Lord, and praise your name for who you are. We praise your name, Lord, because your love endures forever. It has always been there, Lord, and it will always be there. Lord, help us to praise you, Lord. Just in those moments, Lord, when things seem so hard, Put that fire in us, Lord, that passion to be able to sing praises to your name like Paul did. Like Paul sang and Silas sang, Lord, when they were in prison, when everything seemed like it was going against them. They didn't care because they knew who you were. Lord, help us to sing praises to your name as well. In those times when things are dark, when we're sick or our family members are sick, when we have lost a loved one, when our jobs are going hard, when our school is not where we want it to be and we feel hopeless. May we continue to praise you for who you are and not for the, the things that we're going through right then. May, help us to have that your kind of mindset where we can see the big picture. Help us to realize, Lord, that the things that we go through in this life, the good and the bad, you allow them to happen to us for the good of us, Lord, for our own good, to make us polish to refine us through that fire. Lord, I ask these things of you in Jesus' name. Amen.